Hey guys, Frostman here. I uh, wanted to do a video of uh, something I've been ticking around with lately. Um, I found a HP Media Smart server on Craigslist the other day. Actually, I've had one for uh, the past few years now. Works great. Uh, the one that I have is the EX475, I think. Uh, it's an AMD 1.8, and it comes with 512 uh, running Windows 2003 server, or rather home server. Um, I ended up b bumping that up to a 2 gig stick, uh, which I actually later found out that I, I could put a uh, 4 gig stick in there. But at any rate, it has 2 gigs in it now, and it works all right. Um, though I probably will put 4 gigs in it later. Um, so, but anyway, I found a new one. Um, it's the EX485. Uh, it's a Celeron 2 point something with uh, 2 gigs of RAM right out the gate. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of Celeron. I mean, Celeron gets the job done. Um, but I was more interested in trying to drop a uh, dual core in there. Um, I happen to have a dual core laying around, so I figured, you know, what the heck, why not? So, at any rate, I um, wanted to do a video of what it took to put it all together. Um, there are some how to's on uh, mediasmartserver.net. Um, was where I actually found um, quite a bit of information. So if you have any other real questions, definitely hit those guys up. They have a forum and whatnot. Um, but at least as far as what I'm trying to do, um, it definitely um, definitely worked out in my favor. There was a couple little bugs, but I'll go over that later. But at any rate, um, here is a couple things that I had to do. So. One thing you have to do, obviously, the server has to be operational. Um, you know, no bugs, no problems. Um, and depending on what chip you put in there, you can actually get it to work uh, fairly well. I put in the uh, SLGTL uh, Pentium E5300. At least I'm pretty sure that was the one that I put in there. Um, runs 2.6. But uh, I'll show you what it is anyway, but uh, I'll show you what it takes. So here we go. First, we have to log in. Obviously, um, you can get a console cable for it. Um, they actually make a couple of them. But the um, this process you can actually do completely remotely, and uh, um, it works. So anyway, the, and that's how I ended up doing it. So uh, anyway, you want to open up your uh, RDC, or sorry, RDP. So, and I already have a bit of it already set up here. Um, what you'll need is, um, first you'll need AFU Win um, 4.8 was the one that I, I found, as well as AMI uh, BCP, which is actually the, uh, uh, the modifier. So, um, first things first, you need to open up AFU Win. Um, in my case, I already have uh, Server 2008 on it, uh, which is 64-bit. Um, the regular uh, Windows Server is 32 bit, so um, this is the only step that you'll have to do differently. Um, you'll want the 32 bit. Um, so anyway, open up AFU Win, and then it'll say, you know, don't screw stuff up. And quite literally, just save. It's the first step. Um, you want to save it, stash it somewhere um, that you can easily get. Um, you want to make sure that it's it's somewhere handy because you're going to want it right off the gate. So, um, where I would actually suggest putting it is uh, in uh, the BIOS folder that you created. So all of these files you want to keep, kind of keep together. But uh, so anyway, put it in the BIOS folder. Um, and we'll just call this one new BIOS. I already have the old one in here, but I was going to show you the, the difference in steps. So, um, and save it. Runs through, does this thing. Really subtle, doesn't give you any other indication. Uh, just stage done, and then you hit exit. Um, go back out, go into the AMI BCP. Um, now, one thing worth mentioning, if you don't know, um, 
Windows uh, Server 2003, or rather the, the home home server, has kind of a lock-in for um, the machine locking you out. You can't open up any other programs or uh, install it. It's really kind of annoying. Um, there's a couple workarounds with that. Uh, one being you can uh, open up your command prompt and navigate to this file and then just execute it and you're done. Um, alternatively, you can uninstall, and if I remember correctly, you have to uninstall. Where are you at? I, actually, it's not going to have it here because um, I have 2008 instead of the home server software. Um, you'll have to uninstall, go into programs and features, and then under Internet Explorer, there is a for administrators or all users. I just removed both of those, um, and that allows you to. Uh, to actually uninstall, you'll have to reboot and come back into it though. But if you don't care to do that right now, you can do command prompt and I always forget how to. Anyway, um, from the C drive because that's where I put the BIOS folder. Um, and then you want to just do uh, the AM, uh, AMBCP file. So you can just double click that. If you have that already done through the, uh, the tools, or you can just uh, do that and it'll open it up. Same difference. So, uh, file open. And you'll want to select your, your old BIOS or your current BIOS. Um, in my case, I'm going to do what it was before I started fiddling with anything. And what you'll want to look at is go into Advanced and then CPU Configuration. Now, what you're going to want to do is pay attention to this, this record right here. Um, mine's not modified, so this is my old one. Uh, it's 0000. zero, zero, zero. Uh, you want to actually change it to... Uh, and double click on it. You want to do zero one and zero one, and then um, you can also modify the speed step here um, to do uh, zero zero to turn it off or zero one to, to turn it on. Um, I turned it off, so just set that to zero zero, and then hit uh, save. So, and actually, I want to not modify that one. Um, and then do save. Close out of it, and then go into AFU Win again. Open up 64-bit. In my case, your case would be 32-bit, uh, and then double-click and open it up. So now you actually want to do open. Open up your BIOS, the file that you just saved which is, is going to be the old file that you modified and resaved. Um, and then what you need to do is just load current optimal and then hit flash. I'm not going to do it in this case because mine's already working, but as soon as you hit flash, um, it'll break down through the progress here all the way to the end. It'll say done, very subtle, uh, but everything should be green if I remember correctly. Um, but once it says done, you hit exit and uh, reboot your machine. Don't take it apart just yet. Reboot your machine. Make sure that everything is is operational and that uh, it's not gonna not gonna break it right off the gate. Um, then, once it is working and everything's all copacetic and everything, uh, <laughs> go ahead and take it apart, dismantle it, put your CPU in there. I have a couple pictures at least of how I put it all together, um, but uh, then you can dismantle it. And what I ended up doing is I kind of mocked it up so that way you can uh, set it up and test it. I have a little uh, video monitor um, that allows me to actually plug it into a, uh, a regular monitor since it is headless, but they do have a, uh, uh, a header that you can plug into. I made mine. They sell them. Um, a little bit too cheap for that, I guess. But um, at any rate, yeah. Once And then once that all was said and done, I... Uh, 
you know, booted it up with my new processor, dual, dual core in my case, and then you just uh, open it up and wham, there you go. Mine's 5300, 2.6. Um, I only have the 2 gigs of RAM in there at the moment. Um, I reloaded Windows on it. Um, nothing against the uh, home server, but I wanted actual 64 bit. I wanted to open up all of that uh, memory because I can actually put 4 gigs in there, which I'm going to. Um, which um, how I install that is a whole that's a whole different video. So at any rate, uh, hopefully that was helpful to somebody. Um, works for me. So at any rate, um, I'll be ten ten on the side. Thanks.